what's going on what's going on welcome back to the channel one man's walk i am your host come on back at you with another one and so what we have for you today i just came back um premiere night seeing the eternals movie and here are my thoughts so off the break i would say it definitely doesn't feel like a marvel movie it feels it actually doesn't even really feel like a superhero movie even though it's a superhero movie um, I do want to say this will be spoiler. So if you're looking for a non-spoiler review, you'll probably have to go somewhere else. Hopefully you will stick around here, you know, um, but yeah. So this is definitely a Marvel movie that does not feel like a Marvel movie. It does not feel like it's part of the cinematic universe. There are some tie-ins. Um, they do mention Thanos and obviously at this point in time everyone should be sticking around for the post credit scene the two post credit scenes there are two post credit scenes until ladies and gentlemen until the lights actually come on in the movie theater just stay in the movie theater uh, we still have people 20 odd years into this marvel thing who are what is now i think it's 20 years but however long we've been since 2008 what is that 11 years into this marvel thing and people are still getting up um after the movie's over um before after the first uh cut scene after this before the second cut scene so let's just stay but so my thoughts are i don't know if i liked it i don't think it was bad i also don't think it was good now i'm sure other people will have different takes and they'll have a different thought process on what they thought or how they liked it and that's fine me personally my wife and i went to see it it was cool i like the cast i'm a big angelina jolie fan got the movies upstairs i do like her um salma hayek is is pretty dope the the black guy i like him um he's in what was he just in i just saw he was in godzilla and he was in something else he was just in godzilla and he was in something else but i can't think of what the other something else is that he was in but he was in something else recently as well um, I seen the uh, commercial, so it looks like he's going to be on Atlanta season three, uh, the Donald Glover show. I haven't watched that, but I saw a clip, and I'm guessing he's he, he'll be on season three of that. Um, who else did I know? Uh, Gemma, love the name Gemma. Gemma, I remember from that TV show where she was, oddly enough, playing a synthetic robot. It was the AMC show. I cannot think of what the name of it is off the top of my head, but on that show, she played a synthetic robot um, into where a world in which synthetic robots were part of the norm and, and things like that. But somebody was trying to kill them and killing them off or one robot was killing people and the robots were becoming human and starting to have a, a soul, quote unquote, and she was one of the ones that was breaking the mold. And so I do dig her. She's pretty cool. Um, love the name Gemma. Um, if my wife watches this, I don't know if she'll watch it, but if she does end up watching this, I still think Gemma's an amazing name if we end up having another a job. In addition to the three we already have, if we get a girl at some point, Gemma, I am sticking with that name. I love the name Gemma. So, the cast was good. The story was, okay, so they gave, I, they, it was a long movie. Let me say that too. It was an extremely long movie. The reasoning behind and, and and obviously i'm forgetting um robert stark and john snow are both in the movie both vying for the attention of Gemma. so there, there's a my brain is racing because a whole bunch of stuff i literally just watched it so many different things that i'm thinking as i'm as i'm thinking about the movie one being i just don't know the reasoning i guess makes sense but you could tell the entire time, it's like they were they were breaking the rules anyway. So there was obviously gonna be a point where they broke away from what um, the Celestials or the, the, the Red Celestial um, wanted them to do because the young lady who was deaf with the ability to run extremely fast, she was stealing stuff. The other guy was mind controlling people and those were things that they shouldn't have been doing that they were doing anyway. And so there was always the, they gave us the hints along the way that they were going to be breaking the mold. 
they also gave us the twist that similar to what took place in was that captain marvel where captain marvel yes captain marvel where she thought she was the good guy and the kree were the good guys they ended up being the bad guys and when they became the bad guys she then had to make a decision of whether she wanted to continue in the role she had always been in and known or if she wanted to help these unknown people the, the scroll and so similar to that the eternals were really the bad guys they are the villains of the movie and obviously uh rob stark icarus ends up being the the villain villain um and i'm telling you when when we got to the point the moment where the the uh the bollywood star was saying um man i'll be with you to the end and when they cut back to the scene with him and salma i said oh crap he killed salma like and my wife was like no 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 that's not what happened and i'm like he killed her now technically the deviants killed her but he killed her and so man some people just loyal to the cause right aren't they you can see the genocide taking place and some people like look man i was i was given orders and I'm gonna just I'm gonna just run with these orders until and I'm like wow that's that's wild, but some people are like that right and you you know it is what it is you understand that with people. His character was, eh, obviously the I'm gonna have to watch, um, new rock stars and emergency awesome and these other channels to kind of get an idea of what in the world took place at the end. Obviously, uh, the celestial took Gemma took. Uh, the black guy and took um, the little girl Sprite and it left Angelina Jolie, the fast girl and um, the guy with the mind control ability to which another Eternals because obviously they're Celestials in different galaxies and this is kind of how we open up the Marvel world more to showcase different galaxies. So obviously we're dealing with different universes but now we're gonna get different galaxies within these the multiverse. So it's, it's it's a lot that's taking place. The the ending part part kind of tied it in more so. Um, the understanding of oh this guy is Thanos' brother, things of that nature. So that stuff kind of tied in, but it didn't take away from the fact that it was still for a long movie. I felt like it did not move along pretty quickly. We spent a lot of time, I guess, trying to know what was going on and why they were gonna turn on. The celestials and why they were gonna get a heart or soul or whatever you want to call it except for why we didn't get that with the with the young black girl why we didn't get um her backstory was she on the ship the whole time is that what that was meant to be that she didn't really go anywhere she was so fast she could always go somewhere and come back to the ship because the workspace was different there were chips inside there so clearly she had been in the ship for some point or some part of the time um the agenda that kind of was pushed with the, the black guy and he gave up on humanity but came back to get himself a man and, and have a kid and i was like oh okay all right i guess we're doing that now too so probably could i could have done without that um could have done without the whole bollywood thing too like that was unnecessary though the guy who was with the the bollywood guy i don't know what his name was but the guy who was shooting the lasers out of his fingers his protege or manager or whoever he was the that guy was great he was spot on with everything everything he did was great his delivery of his lines his emotion where did he keep getting all those cameras from? I mean, like everything about him was really, really good. He was definitely a highlight of the movie. I understood with Sprite and the dilemma she faced because one, when we got the illusion of her at the very beginning of the movie and we saw what she could have looked like um, as an adult, it was a very pretty young lady, right? But then here she is stuck as a child. Now she's just as old as the rest of them. She's what, 7,000 or so years old or whatever the case is, but she can't grow, which sucks. And then here she is in love with the, the main Superman type character who's in love with Gemma. And I can see how at the end of the day, she's like, screw it. 
clearly he's out with her and this might be my chance to get in. Now, I still think it's a twisted, messed up way of going about it, but I can understand how she got there. And so her reasoning for wanting to side with him at the end, I can see it. I still don't agree with it, but I can see it. I can understand it. And it sucks because, man, these, celestial, uh, these Celestials made them and gave them all these unique powers. Why in the world does one can't speak? It has to use sign language why is it that one is is a child and can grow like i feel like what are we doing here um the deviants and their ability and i'm just like man did they just figure out to be able to absorb the powers of the of the eternals and whatnot i mean that one guy i, I was really hoping he would have fought icarus to kind of see well now that he has two of the celestial powers flowing through his, his his blood what does he look like matching up against Icarus um Rob Stark and I feel like we were deprived of that which sucks because that would have really been nice um I didn't like and I knew he was going to do it the moment he apologized and look I am all here for the second chances not even second chances another chance because we all constantly mess up we all do stupid things we all say stupid things we act stupid things we do things in emotion we do things with feeling we do things when we think we're right and we may not be and so I am not here to be against the whole redemption portion as, a, as an individual who needs redemption needed redemption and needs redemption himself right I'm just like, man, I know he's going to run off or fly off, right? No, he's going to fly off. And I'm like, oh, man, is he about to pull a Scarlet Witch? I mean, at least Scarlet Witch stayed on the planet, right? When 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 she did it. But I was like, yeah, this guy's going to step away. So I guess we'll see him in part two of the Eternals. And I kind of want to know where in the timeline does this fall comparable to the other movies we know are post Thanos snap. So is this after Scarlet Witch? Is this after Loki? Where does this fall in comparison to Spider-Man um, Far From Home? Uh, where does it fall in connection to where we're going with Doctor Strange and the new Spider-Man is coming out? Where does this fall? Because in the middle of the Indian Ocean, they said the Celestial is frozen there. So obviously it did make news and it wasn't just something that it was on this remote area in the water and nobody was aware of it. It did happen. Where is it in context to everything else? Right before it ended too, Gemma did say, hey, I can't hide anymore and act like I'm not this powerful person that I am. And right before the celestial i can't think of what the celestial's name is but the red one was like i'm just gonna take you she was ready to say i i guess suit up as an avenger i did hear some things about snow john snow i don't remember what his name is john snow being a um knight of some sort there's something going on with that sword obviously and i do think that that is a real thing because athena who is Angelina Jolie's character near the ending was holding the sword, a real sword. Now, obviously she was making sword and weapons out of her hands and things like that, but she had a real sword. And in that real sword, it was, she called it Excalibur, which we know to come from King Arthur and that mythology, which has its own gem, a shout out to that. But um, I do wonder, is that the same sword or something of that ilk? Now, again, I'll have to watch some of these other people's videos to get better insight because I didn't read comics. I don't really know much about comics. I am going in blind with the Eternals. I didn't really know anything going on with them. And so this is a, a first for me in being able to understand, well, hey, what's going on with the Eternals? So please, you know, leave in the comments um, if you know more information about what's going on, feel free to let me know. If I find out more information, I can drop it in the comments, things of that nature, but it's all going to be new to me. Um, what's going on here? Again, the movie was cool. 
I actually personally found the Shang-Chi movie to be a better movie. I like the Shang-Chi movie as an origin story. This is essentially an origin story. I thought the Shang-Chi did a better job as an origin story than this did. Again, it wasn't bad. It wasn't good to me either. It probably is not something I'm probably going to watch a ton of times. Maybe it may get another watch. Maybe not. There's Marvel movies I've watched multiple times and there's Marvel movies I have literally only seen the one time that I saw it, whether it was in the movie theater, whether it was on DVD, whether it was streaming, and I've never seen it again. I do feel more inclined that this Eternals movie is probably going to fall in that may not watch it again if it happens to come on. And once I get more context of some of the other implications of what took place in the movie and what it means for future movies and how maybe it's tied in, maybe I'll have a better appreciation for the movie. But just on my first thoughts, my initial thoughts, literally just seeing the movie, that's how I feel. And so, um, yeah, that, that, that's it. Um, don't want to hold you guys, but that's, that's, that's where I am with it. So leave your comments. What did you think of it when you see it? Obviously, this is Thursday. The movie officially comes out tomorrow, Friday. But um, you, as, as we all know, the movie theater lets you kind of watch movies that Thursday. And so I, am, I watched it tonight. And so, yeah, but as always, on purpose, hope you guys have a wonderful, blessed, productive, stress-free day weekday weekend whenever you're watching whenever you're listening till next time